Talk all you want, but I think the main thing is you guys shouldn't be doing things. And that's not for me, that's for everybody, you know, just, you know. Well, I talk about things in the media. And then yeah, just go it's, home it's and much beer. It's, it's, like, it's much more effective to, to do a, a benefit for Bosnian rape victims and come up with how much money did we make for that, you know? 55 grand. You know, I mean, that, that makes way more of an yeah. impact than talking about it. And, and we got this uh, organization called the Balkan Women's Aid Fund. Flash the address, and you can send donations to. And we're working with women's groups in Croatia and Austria and Hungary and Serbia, and, uh, and in Bosnia Herzegovina. So we don't have any like nationalist ties whatsoever. A lot of these women are just caught in the middle of it all. A lot of the lyrics I thought was just thrown in. I mean, uh, it, they could have deeper meaning, and I tried to really analyze them. But some of these lyrics just seem like, I think if I was stoned when I, when I listened to it, I'd like, oh. but I don't do that anymore. That's it. <laughs> I'm in college. It's target marketing. The first couple of songs were pretty good. The fourth song, Rate Me, I was not too happy with that song. I found it kind of offensive. It's an anti, let me repeat that, anti-rape song. Um, I don't know, I just thought, I got tired of people thinking, trying to put too much meaning into my lyrics, you know, it's being too, uh, not making no sense, you know, so I decided uh, to be really blunt and bold. Me! But we had an idea of a, of a sound that we've been wanting for a long time, you know, because of Steve Albini's production from a lot of other bands like Breeders and the Pixies. And, like that. It's just it's just that sound that we really like. We thought that sounded so natural and real. It had a, it has a really beautiful ambience to it. On the on a record, it says recorded by. It doesn't say produced by. That's the ethic. He's like Mr. Ethic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we gave him two million dollars. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Up until now, Kurt Cobain has been the musical force behind Nirvana, writing all the music and lyrics to their songs. But for the track Scentless Apprentice on their new album, all three members collaborated for the very first time. Is this a trend that will continue? Hell yes. It takes the pressure off of me. Um, Dave came up with the drum beat, and we just built the song off of the drum. And the riff, yeah. yeah. He came up with the drum beat, and then he showed me the riff, you know? And it was really simple, and, and we thought, well, this, this could work. And, and I was thinking, oh, this is kind of bonehead, is and then I thought, like, oh, we'll work on it, and then and it turned out great. And now I'm excited about it because now we can write together even more. You know, we're really passive aggressive people. We don't like to, you know, complain to each other very often. And that's probably why we survive. We should go into therapy, years. all of us. Sit down with this therapist. No way. We should just bitch about each other in, in articles, you know, separately. Yeah, read the book. Yeah. Read the book, I know, yeah. Nirvana's authorized book, Come As You Are, filled with intimate details of the trio and their rise to the top, is just as revealing to the band as it is to their fans. I learned a lot from that book. Yeah. <laughs> I learned back. a lot from almost, you know, the first two chapters, mm -hmm. but I should just shut up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>